Hello everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video and in this video what I want to do is give a walkthrough to anybody who has a working interview with an office that is using Ventrix Ascend. So let's get started. So usually when you log into Dentrix Ascend, this is going to be the first page that you are exposed to. So it's going to be the office overview page. As you can see here, you're going to see their unattached procedures, how much and how many, how much and how many and unsent claims they have, and also their unresolved claims. And for the working interview, I know you're going to have the position in mind or you're already going to know which position it is that you're applying for but i also want you to ask even if it's not in your interview in your working interview exactly what it is that that's expected of you are they looking for somebody that's bubbly that's quick on their feet that's a quick learner i guess they're always going to say yes to that one but are they expecting you to hit the ground running, so to speak. So you're gonna know like how fast it is that you're really gonna need to pick up or if there's gonna be training involved, are they gonna have somebody available to sit down with you and walk you through everything? And even if, regardless of what they say in the interview and regardless of what they tell you face to face, during your working interview, you're gonna be able to see and experience the kind of training that they have. Because many times I have started in office that they told me that they had training and what they meant was having somebody that sits next to me doing their job that I'm able to ask. You're gonna wanna know, is that person gonna be available to you full time? Or if you're gonna view somebody full time and if so, for how many days before they set you off on your own. This is going to be very important and it's going to prepare you for your job once you get it because you are going to get it, okay? I'm putting that on the universe for you. So you're going to also be able to see where it is that the office is lacking once you view everything in regards to their scheduling, how far out they're scheduling, how busy their phone calls are. You're going to observe all of this because not only are they interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them. And be honest. Don't be afraid to just walk away from an opportunity if you don't feel like it's the right fit, whether that's going to be the whole flow of the office or the vibe of the other workers or whether or not what they told you in the interview stays true to what you see in your working interview. Because ideally, this is not going to be a job that you're going to have just for a few weeks or a few months, but it's going to be a job that you're going to have for at least a few years. So bear that all in mind, that you are also interviewing the office as well as they are interviewing you. You want to be able to know that you're walking into a situation that you can handle because there's nothing worse than being caught off guard. Enough about my rants. So here is with Dentrix Ascend and their overview, you're gonna be able to see where it is that they're lacking, where they're strong. So by me viewing this overview page, I can tell that very good at sending out their claims. There are no unsent claims and there are very few un unattached procedures to claims. Also, I can see that they're strong in their unresolved claim area where there are very few insurance follow-ups. So I'm assuming that they already have somebody that's doing the follow-ups. You're going to be able to see that a lot of their patients are confirmed or unconfirmed. So here I would be a little more worried about their unconfirmed appointments, especially once it goes further into the week unscheduled recare. So I could see here that somebody is not concentrating on that. So maybe that would be your job or if you can ask if that's something that you can help with. And also their missed appointments are very high for the month. So maybe that's something that you can help or you can ask them if that's an area that you can help. Once you get used to the flow and you're used to your own responsibilities because Regardless, if you see all of this and it's overwhelming, you want to concentrate on what it is that is your core responsibilities for your job. Enough about that rant. <laughs> so one of the important things that you're going to have to learn is how to schedule a patient and also how to import insurance and treatment. So let's get started with that. 
So we're going to go into schedule. And of course, a few of the questions that you want to ask in the beginning of your working interview is how your appointments are scheduled, how new patients are scheduled, whether or not you're going to be able to depend on a send and the length of the appointment that they give you. Meaning, if you're creating an appointment and you start entering codes, because this is where we would enter codes, if that length of time that a send is now giving me going to be appropriate. Or if they're going to say no, for an example, mouth and prophy, that's actually an hour and not the half hour that a send gives you. Make sure you write all of that down, especially when it comes to the usual appointments that the office makes. You're going to want to know the length of that time and who sees those patients, whether um, new patients are seen with the doctor or the hygienist, and whether or not they do cleanings for new patients, or if the patient is expected to come back for a cleaning to see a hygienist. Now, once you're scheduling a patient, you would easily do what I had just done by selecting the area once my patient is already selected. Or if it's a new patient, and even if the person on the phone is telling you, no, I've never been seen there before, you always want to do a quick search because what if the patient forgot they were seen? What if they scheduled an appointment and were not technically seen, but they are in the system? You don't want to duplicate a patient in their system because they'll see that as a fault. So once you search and you find, no, this patient has not been seen here, you have two ways of creating a patient. You can either create them here when I was searching for them, or once you go through the schedule and you find a time and day that the patient agrees to, and once you search, bam, they're not here. You can click create, you can click new patient appointment, and you can start entering their name and their date of birth here. You also want to put in the procedures. So you're going to click into procedure search and start entering those procedures. So you can either put in the description, profi, or you can put in the actual code itself. So I said profi. And what I like about Ascend is like there's no sections. So you can put with the D or without the D and just put in the numbers or you can put in the description. So that's always cool. You're gonna ask them what it is that they put in other, whether that's gonna be type of insurance, patient's copay, any notes that the patient may have given you. Under contact information, you're gonna complete entering the patient with address, phone number and email. Under notes, this is where I like to not only write it down, the insurance information, just in case I lose everything that I'm entering in the patient, but also if they're coming in for a limited, then I would like to put in exactly what it is a patient's telling me. So some questions that you want to ask if they are coming in for a limited or something in pain, a specific area, exactly where that area is, I like to divide it at least by quad. So is it on the left or the right side, the top or the bottom? So, or if they say it's the front, is it closer to the left or the right? Or if it's in the bottom, same thing, the left or the right. So you want to try to pinpoint as much as possible. You also want to ask them when the pain started, what they were doing. You want them to describe the pain. Is it a constant pain or is it only when they're eating or drinking? Is it sensitive to hot and cold? Does medication help? All of these is going to help the doctor be prepared once they actually see the patient and are ready to evaluate the patient. I also like to put in the insurance information if they have insurance. If they do, you want to be sure that take it or that they're in network with the insurance. If they are, you're going to put in the name 
of the insurance, if the patient is the subscriber, if they're not the subscriber, you're going to want the subscriber's name and the subscriber's date of birth. Patient ID number, you're going to want their ID number. I like to get the insurance phone number just in case. And this is going to help you deter from needing to call the patient and reach out to them because there's going to be a possibility that they won't pick up. And you're going to click save. Now, if you're going to be responsible or if from here, if you have verified the insurance coverage, ideally you will, in the patient, you're going to be able to click on patient or on the down arrow insurance information. And this is where you're going to be able to input the insurance. So you're going to click add plan. And under plan search, you can either enter the, the courier name, so the name of the insurance. I don't like to do that because it's not detailed enough for you to select the correct plan for that patient. So in here, I like to always start with the group number. Or you can enter the group name or the employer's name. And then something will pop up. So if the plan does pop up, you'll be able to select it. Put the patient's ID number. The correct coverage start date. Eligibility, so you're going to be able to put that they're eligible. And the day that you verified the coverage. And then you're going to click Save. And then that's how the insurance is entered. Perfect. So if you're going to be responsible for entering treatment as a treatment coordinator, you're going to click that down arrow again. Under clinical, you're going to go into chart. And let's say we're going to put in an extraction for number 18. So you're going to select your tooth. Add procedure and under procedure search you can either start by typing in the description of the procedure and then you can see here they'll let you know what type of extraction it's going to be or if you're very familiar with your codes you can just start entering the procedure code Bam. Awesome. So now with that, you're going to go under treatment plan. You're going to see your procedure code right here. Select it. On the top here, you're going to click move to. And either you're going to enter it into one of the current cases or new case. Perfect. Now, when I create a case, I always like to name it. So I'm going to put extract number 18, rename, perfect. And then from here, um, let's say you have multiple codes, you would be able to select it, click move to, and then it will give you the option to move it to a visit or to another case if you change your mind or with the procedure selected you can always drag it down here and then it would put it in its own visit so if you also want to add a note to your treatment you can write it right here so this is what is giving pain Click show on form, preview, bam. And then from here, Ascend will calculate. It well, it will start by giving you the details of the insurance. So the name of the insurance along with their notes if you hover over. So that's going to be the notes of the insurance of that specific plan. 
which I always enjoy. You're going to be able to see the um, plan maximum and their deductible. And the patient's responsibility. From here, I always like to double check that the correct provider is selected. And then you can see your note here. This is what's giving pain. And then as well as any disclaimers that the office has already automated. And then you can print. And that's how we create a treatment plan in Detrix Ascent. If you want to view a patient's x-rays, how we would do that is on the down arrow, once you have your patient selected, under clinical, you're going to go to imaging. And you can see all of the x-rays that the patient has taken. And with this arrow, you can go back further into their history. Here's where you're also going to see any photos that were taken of the patient. If you want to view any text messages or if you want to text message this patient in specific, in this box right here, you would just click on that. And of course, for this patient, I don't have the correct phone number because I don't want anybody calling me, but it would give me the option to text the patient right here. And I believe that's the quick overview of what I wanted to do for somebody or what I wanted to show somebody in regards to how to use the scent. I hope this helps anybody feel a little less overwhelmed. I know you're going to rock that working interview. And actually, this gave me the idea to do a more detailed video on what to expect and what to do during your working interview so that you, way you get the offer that you're expecting. Thank you so much. I wanted to make this one a little quick overview just because I am having quality issues when uploading my videos. So that is something I'm currently working on and hopefully with this video and moving forward, I would have that problem addressed. Thank you again, keep smiling and I'll see you in the next video.